Hey guys, happy Wednesday. So I am here to share with you guys more about the 21 days of prayer for your business. And um, we started this several days ago. We're running a few days behind, but that's okay. Um, we are going through this 21 days of prayer for your business by Monique um, McLean. That's how you say her name. This is a great book. If you don't have it, I would definitely recommend it. And we are going to go over day 9 and day 10 today. And if you missed the ones um, previously, you can either find them here on Facebook or you can go um, to my YouTube channel. It's called Mama Gone Granola, and I've saved them all there. They're also going to be on Instagram under Mama Gone Granola, but the last one I did was too long. It wouldn't let me upload, so I have to go to YouTube um, to find that one. I'm sorry, it's my washer. Okay, so day nine is called Embracing Excellence. So this chapter um, is about trying to understand the difference between living with excellence and being weighed down by perfectionism. So I don't know if anybody watching this struggles with perfectionism, but I will admit that I definitely do, especially after reading these two chapters. Um, some of the things that she mentioned definitely, you know, was hitting the nail on the head there. So um, she talks about first, there is a difference between embracing excellence and being a slave to perfectionism. Excellence is something that's obtainable. Being perfect is never going to happen. Um, and excellence is going to uplift us and encourage us when perfectionism just will continue to make you feel defeated. And if you feel defeated, you're not going to be able to move forward in life or business. Um, you were not made to be perfect, but you were made to live a life of excellence. That is what God created each one of us, especially um, to live that life of excellence. And she talks about the first thing that we have to come to understand is that we cannot say yes to every single thing that comes our way. I'm really bad about that. Um, we have to say no to some of the good things so that we can embrace a few things with excellence. So when you try to say yes to all the things, you're not going to be excellent <laughs> at all the things because we just can't so if you say yes to a few of the things then we can do those few things with excellence and it's much um much easier to do that than trying to um you know be perfect at everything because it's not going to happen <clears throat> and then um she tells us to kind of write down some of those things think about the things um, that you want to make sure that you are embracing excellence with, whether it's in life or in business. Think about those things. What is the most important to you? And learn how to say no um, and make the decisions on what things you want to do. Um, she talks about here, excellence is making the most with the time you currently have on hand. So all of us are in different stages um, and different seasons. Some of us may have more time, um, per se. There are 24 hours in a day, but it's different to everybody. So if you're a new mom and you have a new baby at home, time is different for you than a mom whose kids may be at school. Um, or maybe you're taking care of a sick family member. There's lots of different things. So we have to learn to be excellent and make the most time with what we currently have on hand and embrace that we're in that certain season for a reason and God has placed us there and we need to learn to embrace that as hard as it may be sometimes <clears throat> and then the last part here is talking about growing your strengths so <clears throat> she talks about grow your strengths and sharpen your gifts and talents work on the things that you are naturally good at and that you love so many times people think they want to spend, they need to spend all their time working on their weaknesses, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but when you're enhancing what you already are naturally good at, 
that is screaming excellence. So find those things that you know you're good at and become excellent at those. And then team up with other people um, who are good at those things that you're not so good at, um, whatever that may be. Um, and it may be just following somebody. Find um, somebody that you admire that's really good at those things and follow them and watch them and then you can learn from that and then team up with somebody. Pray for God to send you somebody um, in your life. If you don't have somebody, send somebody to me that is good at, you know, I'm not good at like numbers and spreadsheets and all that stuff. I don't really like it. Um, so my husband is really good at that. So that's why he gets all that that stuff to do. <clears throat> okay, then um, I love this verse that she gives us at the end here. Um, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So when we remain in him, we will produce fruit. Love that. All right, so 10, day 10, kind of follows suit with this one. This was embracing excellence, and then this one gets into more of the perfectionism. So perfectionism can weigh you down. <clears throat> this is where we, I kind of got like, you know, the nail on the head thing going a little bit. <laughs> um, because I don't think any of us, maybe some people are like, yeah, I'm a perfectionist, I'll admit it. But I think most of us are like, no, I mean, I don't, I'm not a perfectionist, but, um, I would say a lot of these things here, definitely, I will say, um, describe myself. So some, I'll read a few of them here. A perfectionist will let failures get in their head and slow them down. They never start something because they're too busy trying to make it perfect before they begin. Hmm. Um, a perfectionist feels like they have never done enough, they've never given enough or loved enough. They are consumed by guilt. They are stressed out, overwhelmed, and worn down. Um, their weaknesses stand out to them like a neon flashing sun. They are very critical of themselves. So those are just some of the things that she talks about here. Um, and she wants you to write out the feelings that consume your life because you're carrying that heavy weight of being perfect. And then the verse she gives us um, about what the Bible says on perfectionism, this is really cool. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. Love that. <laughs> I don't know, honestly, that I have read that verse before, and I love it. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. That's the New Living Translation. Maybe I've read the NIV at some point. but Okay, so how do you work at overcoming perfectionism in your life? So she talks about when you embrace the excellence, like we talked about in the previous um, day in your life, in your business, whatever it may be, you are embracing your unique design with the tools and resources you currently have on hand. <clears throat> we have to start by giving ourselves grace and we can only do that or we can only do what we can do. Understanding that, you know, do the best you can with the resources that you have and don't compare your season to somebody else's season because it's completely different. The comparison trap will never get you anywhere. <laughs> never. You will sit in it and stir and never move forward. You cannot get in that comparison trap. It's easy to do, um, but we cannot, we cannot be there in that place. Um, she talks about knowing how you're uniquely made is critical in fighting perfectionism. So we can't begin to fight the perfectionism until we know what, how God has created us and who we are in him. And then you can start to move forward. Um, so she talks about here, she wants you to write down, um, is it hard for you to give yourself grace? And what are the biggest things that you beat yourself up over? And write those things down so you be can begin to <clears throat> move forward. 
getting at the root is the last part that she talks about here. So if we want the fruit of perfectionism to quit growing and popping up in our life, then we need to get to the underlying cause and uproot it. So somebody asked her, um, this is kind of what how she came to that realization, is somebody said to her, why do you feel that way? Um, you know, when she was talking about basically, you know, that she had to be perfect in everything that she did. And so he says, you know, why? And she's like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, well, why do you feel that way? And she says, because I want to help people. I want to add value to people. I don't want people to think I don't care. Um, I want to do my best. And again, why? Why is that? So you have to, you know, sit and think about that for yourself. Why is it that I feel like I have to do these things perfectly? Um, and then she tells you to read John, um, the Gospel of John 17 and 18. So real, I'll just sum up that, 17, 18, go and read it, chapter 17, 18 in um, the Gospel of John. And basically it's the section that um, Jesus' friends basically you know they don't know him they reject him they're like yeah we hung out all the time we were best friends but now i don't know who you are not a clue um and you know how rejected he was and he was perfect so um all of those things happen to a perfect individual <laughs> And you and I are never going to um, be perfect. We're never going to obtain perfectionism. We are imperfect people, and we're dealing with imperfect people. So that's not a good situation for something perfect. Um, so we have to realize that. And knowing that we're going to let people down, and they're going to let us down. And that is, that's just the way it is. That's what's going to happen. And um, the best thing that we can do is strive to be excellent and be intentional with ourselves and growing each day to move forward and leave the perfectionism out. <laughs> um, so again, she says, if you deal with perfectionism, you know, think to yourself why, um, you know, what what is the root cause of this um, feeling of perfectionism? And I love this book because she has the most beautiful prayers um, that she shares at the end of each section. Love, love, love the prayers that she has there. And then she gives you the walk it out again. I told you um, spending time thinking about jo chapters John 17 and 18, acknowledging when you're embracing perfectionism in your life. I love how she does that. So, again, that was day 9 and 10. We're a little behind, but I just want to keep this kind of short, um, not keep it too long. 21 Days of Prayer by Monique McLean. Love this book. All right, guys, make sure you um, comment if you are watching the replay. A couple of you, I see Junior. Hey, Junior. Um, if you're on here, give me, um, you know, questions. I'd love to answer. Let me know what you think about perfectionism, if maybe you're struggling with that. And if you, um, you know, don't want to comment on here, you can always send me a private message. All right, guys, have an awesome Wednesday. Bye.